you might have found yourself in the position where whenever you try to make details in an intricate world, your game art ends up looking like this. One solution to avoiding this problem and making a scene like this look good is to focus on the main shapes of your scene and strip away details. Now you don't have that many details, but your scene does look better. This is what I covered in a recent video of mine. But what if you do want to have details? How can you make it work without it looking like this? Well, let's go over how to create a scene like this and talk about what you need to think about when creating details. So how should we start? Should we just start drawing detailed assets? Well, no. And to understand why, I want us to look at this scene in Have a Nice Death. We can see lots of small details here all over. But if you look at this scene, it only takes you a split second to recognize this. And this looks pretty much the same as the real scene. So the thing with making details is that you can't have the details overpower the composition. And the composition is by and large what actually matters. We can even take a look at the game with even more complex and detailed art like Ghost Song. And if we look at this scene, it still only takes us a split second to break down this. We still have some underlying composition that we can sort of grasp. Compare that to this scene we made before, I don't even know how to break down this scene into its underlying composition. And so I think it's valuable to think of making a scene sort of like building a house. You don't start by building a house by raising a wall, so you shouldn't start making a scene by drawing an asset. When you build a house, you start with a blueprint. And when you build a scene, you start with a composition. And to illustrate this even more, we're gonna make this composition. And we can see that this composition is going to turn into this scene. They look pretty much the same, but this composition took me 10 minutes to make. But to finish the scene took me six hours. Whatever I add here builds from that plan. So we need to make sure that the plan works and that we stick to the plan when we make each asset. So my preferred way of planning my scene is to just take a screenshot of my tile map and then draw a rough composition on top of that screenshot. Let's say on top of this tile map, we also want to have a door in the middle here and we want everything to be sort of sci-fi. Now, if we were to block in the important elements in this scene, we would have this. These are the interactable objects in our scene. And since they are important to gameplay, it's very important that whatever we add in terms of art still matches these same underlying elements. Now the question becomes, how much can we add and what can we add? Well, if we just go step by step and add a background, foreground and midground layer, we can evaluate each step along the way to see if we still feel that the changes we make stay true to this original tile map. So our first step is to add a foreground and create some ideas for what type of assets we might want to have in our foreground. And since we're making something sort of sci-fi and dystopian, I'm just going to make the silhouettes for pipes and scaffolding. And as soon as we have something, we ask ourselves, is this too crazy? Well, in this case, the answer is fairly simple. Since our silhouettes never really extend beyond the tile map and it's fairly dark, it's not that crazy and it looks fine. Now let's do the same for our platforming area. If we start with the platform here, we start thinking about details that we want to add to make this into a dystopian environment. Now we can start adding silhouettes for those type of assets, maybe a pipe, a sign, and just some random shapes. And now we can ask again, is this problematic? Well, now we're starting to interfere and make the tile map less clear. But I'd personally argue that we can make the bottom of the platform more crazy, because this is not a collider we have to interact with that often. Similarly, we aren't really going to have to jump onto this wall or this ceiling, so we can add quite a bit of messy silhouettes here, without it ever impacting gameplay. But we can try to keep these colliders, that actually are important, slightly more empty. And one trick I generally use is to just squint or take off my glasses. If our scene still kind of resembles this overall shape and this overall composition, we are probably fine. It's not a perfect method, but if it starts looking chaotic when you squint, you have probably gone too far. How about the background then? Can we add a lot of details here? Kind of. If I want to keep this composition, I can't add details here on the corners too much. That would interfere with our tile map but I can still add details within this area. I can, for instance, add an asset here in the middle because once again, it doesn't interfere with me being able to see the colliders or the tile map. Once again, we can just go around and try and think of assets that would make this scene look nice. And I would say, if we look at this, it still kind of resembles this. So we have added the ideas for a lot of details, but we still match our tile map quite well. And now we have a plan for our composition. And now using this, we know that we need to make a sign, a platform, some pipes, and just some general background assets. And now we can go ahead and start making the assets required to make this into this final scene. So let's make our first asset, this platform here. And we're going to take this silhouette and make it into this asset. When beginning drawing any asset, I think it's important to take a step and think, what is it that this asset needs to communicate clearly? 
well, a platform needs to communicate that it is a platform. But the fact that I think about this as a first step makes it so that I ensure to keep this top part very simple. It's just a big slab of metal. If I didn't keep this simple, and if I instead chose to just go details all over, we would get something closer to this. Now this isn't the end of the world, but I think it's important to think about your glance value. If you just glance quickly at this, it doesn't quite read as a platform, whereas this does. And I think even though we want to add detail, we shouldn't ignore clarity. As soon as I have this simple top section though, I just add as many details as I want below it. This bottom part is less important, so I can add pipes and vents and cords here. Now this idea of glance value does play some role in how relaxing your game is to look at, but I think the most important thing is thinking about where we place our contrast. Now I want you to ask yourself, where on this platform do you want the player to focus? Well, we know that the platform collider is right here. So if the player is looking at our platform, we want the first thing they notice to be this collider. If I ask this question before I start coloring my asset, then I know that the brightest and most attention pulling colors should be right here at the top. Now what happens if I don't place my brightest and most contrasted colors here on the top? Well, it might look something like this, fundamentally the same type of details, but when I'm not paying attention to where I place my contrast, this starts looking, well, annoying. I think a game that does this really well is Madshot. You can see how all the top sections of platforms are really punchy, whereas the bottom less important part of the asset is really just kind of black. Now we have our first asset. We're just going to take the idea for this platform and cut it up into smaller different detailed versions so that I don't have to spend time drawing the entire scene. Now I want you to see that I can take this idea for this platform and just add it all over the tile map with lots of small pipes and stuff. And we can see that it still looks fine, even though it's insanely messy. Why? Well, one of the big reasons is because it doesn't alter our composition. It doesn't change our original silhouette. The composition is still the same. In this situation, it's fairly clear that the details are dark, so it still looks fine. But you can actually extend this principle quite far. Take a look at this painting I made a while back. You could argue that it's fairly detailed, but if we stop and look at it, we can see that there are really no details here on the top. And we only have some details here on the bottom, but not that many. But then we have quite a bit of details here on this hill. Now if I were to just block this painting into basic shapes, we would have this. Now you know how if you have a world map, each country will have a different color compared to an adjacent country, so that you can easily separate countries from each other. Well I want you to think of this as a world map. If I just take a texture brush and drag it across this hill, it looks, well, kind of even better. We get more separation between this area and this area. But if I start dragging my texture brush on this bottom, now I'm ruining my map. So I'm fine adding a lot of details on this hill, because the hill shapes still become separate from the adjacent shapes. But if I add the same level of details on adjacent shapes, this can potentially risk ruining the composition and ruining our map. The same idea is actually somewhat extended, where you can see extra details on this bottom of the hill here. But if you blur the image, we can see that these extra details just reinforce the idea that the hill stops here. It just makes our composition more clear. Now if we start and look at detailed games like Tales of Iron, we can kind of see that this bookcase is detailed and messy, but the chair in front of the bookcase is not detailed, so it stands out. This house is really detailed, but the important shapes are very easy to see and understand, and we can see that when we have extra many details in one area, they usually leave some open space next to it. This is in large part why a scene like this doesn't look too bad. It's extra messy and detailed here, but the composition of the scene, the composition we kind of like, is still the same. Whereas here, we're ruining our composition. But now we've gone through the importance of maintaining this initial plan, this initial composition. How should we approach this background? Well, you can see one thing I've already done. Instead of adding a black outline to all the details here, I'm using a gray outline. You can use black, it can kind of work, but just as with the bunny painting, you have to be aware that you're messing with this composition. Now you're starting to make it seem as if the background kind of belongs to the midground. But ideally, if we want to make it easy for ourselves, we can make our foreground kind of use these values in this dark gray range. And now when I'm making the background, I'm going to use even lighter grays. So we get this easy separation. Background is in this value range, foreground is in this range, and midground is in this range. And this helps to add separation just as if we used different colors on a map. 
And as we have mentioned, adding too many details on this background will ruin the negative space of the platforming area. Since we have messy details here, we generally want to have less messy details here. So we're not making this background detailed, but we can add some details to it, like a vent, a crack, and a controller thing. With all of this said, you might have to tune it and make some changes when you're actually playtesting this, and you start adding enemies. As far as we've set it up now, this scene is somewhat underwhelming, but it's also really easy to throw in a high contrast saturated enemy, and now the player would notice this enemy immediately, even though we have many details in the scene. And once we have all of this, we obviously could have go further and add more details. But now if we start adding more details, we always have this basic scene to compare it to. Does the scene look better if we add a plant or not? If it does, then we can keep it. This is really part of the reason we want to start with the composition. You might think that adding details is really about how you draw details, but as you have noticed, I haven't really talked about how you draw the details. Because fundamentally, how you draw the details doesn't really matter. What matters is that you think about sort of visual hierarchy and think about your negative space and your composition. With all of this said, how you handle these things will depend on the choices you make. And all of this doesn't need to be exact. And the way we solve potential problems doesn't have to be the same. We can look at a game like Itora, which has a lot of details, but generally the separation is really solid regardless, in part thanks to low contrast details. Sometimes it gets a bit more messy, and other times it's really clean and easy to read. We can look at this and see that they add a lot of details in many areas, but the platforming area is very contrasty, and the background has a very distinct use of atmospheric perspective, so everything in the background is sort of pushed to a rather soft blue tint, which increases that separation. Or you often know something similar, platforming area has high contrast, whereas the background has low contrast and is slightly blurry. All of this to say, I don't really recommend that you go for detailed scenes. First of all, it takes an immense amount of time to draw these details. And on top of all of this, you can see with everything I've mentioned, how if I had just stuck to the basic shapes and just added a simple asset, it would look fine. But what I'm doing here is starting with a simple composition, and then I constantly have to ask myself, how much can I mess with this without ruining my simple composition? It works, it can often make it look better, but it's more work and it's more difficult, which are paths I don't recommend taking if you're a solo developer. With all of this said, I'm not particularly good at this topic. This is at least what I think of when I make a scene like this. All of this to say, if you find yourself making detailed scenes like this, I recommend that you start simplifying your scenes first. With all of this said, there's a lot of things here. Sometimes the problem is going to be too poor separation between one part of your scene and another part of your scene. Other times, it's going to be that one part of your scene demands too much attention and you have too much contrast there. And so there isn't just one solution to all of this. But I think if you have a composition and you stick to composition, you're less likely to end up having details that look off or overpower the scene because you always have something to trace back to. I've started a Patreon. I'm doing this for two reasons. First of all, it would be nice to actually make some money from the channel. As of so far, this channel has cost me more money than it has made. But second of all, I want to practice talking without a script. And I don't want to accidentally destroy the channel uploading stuff that is different from how I usually make my videos. So if you want to pay to watch a slightly less edited version of this, then there's a link down below. Thanks for watching. Bye.